And um, this is my last one. Now, if you um, if you're on Facebook, uh, Facebook's a weird thing, isn't it? I'm on, I've got a Facebook um, uh, like page, so um, like me, I'm so needy. Um, and I've got a profile page, Ash Dickinson Poet. Facebook's weird, isn't it? You know, like uh, status updates, things like that. Well, like we put on, well, like crisps. And um, a friend of mine recently put on, Mark has a new shed. And I actually thought that was less a status update and more a cry for help. <laughs> uh, but, but go visit my page, Ash Dickinson Poet. Um, this is the last one for me. This is about realising that your fridge has fallen in love with you. And this poem comes about by, um, well, does anybody have magnetic fridge poetry at home? You're, I mean, you're all poets, I'm sure you've, you know, you get these little magnetic words you stick on your fridge and you can make poems, can't you? And uh, they're, they're always something rude, aren't they? No matter, no matter how, you're like, I don't know how, because none of the words in themselves are rude. But somehow someone's created some sort of filthy limerick. <laughs> and, and one day I thought, what would happen if my fridge was able to access these words and send me poems? What would it write about? So this is called Chiller Queen. <laughs> my fridge is in love with me. I know this for a fact. It uses magnetic fridge poetry to attract my attention. Dressing itself in tiny tiles, it articulates its desires through striking haiku and short romantic quatrains, <laughs> mesmerizing frivos. Pruning itself of unnecessary verbiage, it is a phenomenally adept wordsmith. It may very well be the greatest inanimate bard in the country today. <laughs> it's surely it or Pete Doherty. <laughs> Just yesterday, it came up with feline eyes beautify, dual fleck life's barren shoreline, hair like the breaking sea. And though it's weird, I must confess being a trifle giddy, and sometimes going to the kitchen when I'm not hungry, just to see if it's crafted anything new. The fridge is relentlessly inventive, considering the narrow selection of words at its disposal. It is only a magnetic poetry travel edition, after all. And as the fridge is ever keen to point out, I've never taken it anywhere. <laughs> I'll pay you mind the fridge, one simply doesn't take substantial electrical appliances on day trips. To which there's always a sumptuously phrased follow-up, how I once went in a car with a microwave oven. <laughs> For the umpteen tower mine, the fridge of the microwave had to go away to be mended. And the fridge says it hopes one day to be so broken it can ride in a car with me. And then it goes into a snit and his inner light refuses to come on for days. The fridge doesn't let me stock it with bacon and sausages, it worries about its weight. Some drunken nights are coming in carelessly show of a pig tat takeaway, and on discovering it the next morning I'm wrapped with guilt. And not only to buy salad and yogurt for a few days, <laughs> and to stroke its door and just away until it hums low and resonant like the belly of a cat. This morning I came to defrost the fridge, what the fridge good naturedly refers to as its time of the month. <laughs> I took out some butter and some sweating mushrooms and a salty pint of milk. And just behind it was a, a tiny woman. She couldn't have been more than three inches tall. She was singularly the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. She looked cold enough. She said she was used to it. I fashioned a jacket from the skin of a kiwi fruit and placed it around her impossibly dainty shoulders. I carefully bent down and offered my hand to climb into it. She reached down by her side and with some effort picked up something half of her size and dropped it into my outstretched palm. It was a gorgeous summer's day. The sun strode into the kitchen and made everything glint. But I could see it was a tiny white magnetic tile. And it simply said, love. Oh. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ash Dickinson.